Two verses. Watch this. 1 Samuel 17, 33. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There is no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. 2 Samuel 5, 6, years later. David led his men to Jerusalem to fight against the Jebusites, the original inhabitants of the land, who were living there. The Jebusites taunted David, saying, you're never going to get in here. Even the blind and the lame could keep you out. Let's digress here for a moment. 1 Samuel 17. Don't be ridiculous. There's no way you can do this. 2 Samuel 5, 6. You're never going to get in here. You're never going to do it. On multiple occasions, David was told he couldn't do it. It was impossible. And yet, he did. David was anointed to prove hell wrong. And just like David, you are anointed to prove hell wrong. I want to speak to you on that subject matter, anointed to prove hell wrong. Anointed to prove hell wrong by issuing a bold declaration. Ridiculous, there's no way. You're never going to get in. Just like David, prior to his greatest victories, these declarations saturate, inundate, and captivate our current reality. Without a doubt, every single day we confront a constant bombardment of negativity, toxic atmospheres, adversity, conflicts, delusional dynamics that include ideologies, social constructs, principalities, powers of darkness with one objective, convince us that it cannot be done. You're never going to defeat the giants in your generation. You're never going to occupy all of God's promises. You're never going to conquer new territories. Never. No way. But when you have faith, when you step into every chapter and season of your life with the certainty of 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by when you live with the sacred algorithm of Romans 10, 17, that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the good news about Christ. When you stand empowered with the promise of Matthew 21, 22, you can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. When you walk and you talk, when you live and give and forgive with that faith, with the faith in Christ, the faith of Christ, with not just your normal religious kind of faith, but with the mountain-moving, devil-rebuking, demon-binding, atmosphere-shifting, captive-freeing, family-saving, supernatural, overflow-inducing, truth-exalting, light-exposing, chain-breaking, door-opening, my cup runneth over kind of faith. Then you can stand up like David did through his actions. Then you can rise up like David did through his accomplishments. Then you can speak up like David did through his psalms and his writings. And because you are crucified with Christ, and now it is Christ living in you, Galatians 2.20. Because you abide in his word, and his word abides in you, John 15.7. Because you are a new creation, a new creation. You're not who you used to be, 2 Corinthians 5.17. Then... You have the authority, the faith, and the power to formally respond. Now, this may be different from your normal Sunday morning, but we are about to occupy promises like never before. We're about to conquer new territories. We're about to do what has never been done before. That's not like rhetorical exuberance and prophetic spaghetti on the wall. You and your family are about to see the glory of Jesus like you've never seen before. Because of that... We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna engage a little bit of audacious faith declaration to all the naysayers and detractors, to all the haters, I'm talking about spirits and principalities, to negative and contrary voices, both internal and external, that have the audacity to tell you that you will never overcome your giants, that you will never occupy your Jerusalem, that you will never live an abundant life, that you will never be right with God, that you will never see your family saved, that you will never see your body completely healed, that you will never conquer your dream and possess the promise that you will never change the world by faith in the name of Jesus by faith in Jesus name I need you to open up your mouth and say two words watch me I dare you to look at your neighbor the one you like the most and tell him watch me watch me overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony watch me 
Watch me conquer the mountain and possess the promise. Watch me live life abundantly. Watch me glorify and magnify Jesus like never before. Watch me and my house serve the Lord. Watch me and my family go from glory to glory. Somebody say, watch me. Watch me live a holy, healed, healthy, happy, humble, hungry, honoring life. Watch me. All of creation is waiting eagerly for that day when God will reveal who his children really are. Watch. We are about to see with that bold declaration, people rise up and prove hell wrong. But it's going to require, number two, an anointing, fresh oil. You are anointed to prove hell wrong with fresh oil. David proved hell wrong because of the anointing. David proved hell wrong because in every major season of his life, he received fresh oil. How many here are aware of the fact that David was anointed three times? Three times. I'll prove it. 1 Samuel 16, 13. David stood among his brothers. Samuel took the flask of oil, olive oil. I love Samuel. What a great name. <laughs> took the flask of olive oil and brought and anointed David with the oil. And the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David from that day on. 2 Samuel 2, 4. And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over house of Judah. 2 Samuel 5, 3. There at Hebron, King David made a covenant before the Lord, and they anointed him king of Israel. He was anointed three times. Psalm 92, verse 10. I've been anointed with fresh oil, he said. The first anointing is the anointing of assignment. The second anointing is the anointing of acceptance. And the third anointing is the anointing of advancement. And when all three of them come together, you are anointed to prove hell wrong. Just like David, but upgraded exponentially to the finished work of Christ on the cross, you are and I are anointed to prove hell wrong. You're not your normal cup of tea. You are anointed. You are anointed. What, what is the anointing? The anointing is heaven's authority upon your divine assignment. The anointing is God's power to fulfill his purpose. The anointing is God's presence that enables you to occupy his promises. The anointing is God's super over your natural, enabling you to experience the supernatural. The anointing is when the grace, gift, and glory of God inside of you come together, empowering you to change the world in front of you. Mark 6, 13, they cast out many demons and anointed many with oil who were sick and healed them. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good things, healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. James 5, 14, if anyone among you is sick, let him call for the elders of the church, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. From Genesis to Revelation, even today, we discover that anointing Anointed people do what others will not do. Anointed people do what others cannot do. Anointed people do not whine, they worship. Anointed people do not focus on the darkness, they turn on the light. Anointed people do not make excuses, they make history. Under the anointing, we shout down walls. Under the anointing, we bring down giants. Under the anointing, we pray down fire. Under the anointing, we cast out devils and demons. Under the anointing, we lay hands on the sick. Under the anointing, we speak truth with love. Under the anointing, we pursue righteousness. Under the anointing, we show our children how to pray. Under the anointing, we advance the Lamb's agenda. Under the anointing, we do justice. We love mercy. And we walk humbly before God. Let me not be presumptuous. Are there any anointed people in the house here today? If you are anointed, I want you to repeat after me. I am saved. I am delivered. I am healed. I am chosen. I am anointed. I am anointed. Matter of fact, go, my family is anointed. My dream is anointed. My going in is anointed. My coming out is anointed. My present is anointed. My future is anointed. I am anointed. You have been anointed by the Holy One and you have knowledge. First John 2, 20. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. What is the anointing? The anointing is none other than the Holy Spirit. For you have received the anointing, the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you. Jason, come up here real quick. I want to illustrate this. 
I want to show you, David proved hell wrong because he was anointed on multiple occasions. I need to show you something. Because the anointing in the Old Testament, the way the anointing and, and what it means and what it represents, and Pastor Mark was referencing this a few days back. Open that up for me for a second here. And back in the Old Testament, when they were anointed, when people were anointed, they would, they would, Any other volunteers? <laughs> Anybody here want a fresh anointing? <sighs> so they, they would, it would be, it wouldn't be just a little dab. It would be, it would. <sighs> By the way, don't ask for a dab of the Holy Spirit. If you want the power of God, don't ask for a dab. We have too many people with dabs. <laughs> We don't want to dab. We don't want to touch. We want all of him. We want all of God's power. All of God's. Can I prophesy to you right now? You and your house are not going to get a touch from God. You're going to be filled with the power and the presence and the glory of the living God. But in the Old Testament, it would be. In, in the Old Testament, it would be just poured out. And it would pour it out. But let me show you. Do you have a little bit of that bio? Let me see it. Go ahead. Drink some. Okay. There it is. And, and, and that's the new reality. Uh, let me explain. In the Old Testament, you, you were anointed from the outside in. When Jesus died and shed his blood, and when he resurrected, and when he sent the Holy Spirit, you, you and I are not anointed from the outside in. Now we're anointed from the inside out. I'm preaching to five people right now. You're anointed from the inside out. You have received the Holy Spirit who lives inside of you because you're anointed from the inside out. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Somebody praise God like you're anointed and act like you're anointed. I tell you to lift up your hands and say, I'm anointed. As for me and my house, I am anointed. We are anointed. We are anointed. Because that anointing lives inside of you. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Woo! You're anointed. You're not a victim. You're anointed. You're not broke, busted, and disgusted. You're anointed. You're not the devil's punching bag. You are anointed. And if you want to serve as countercultural alternatives to the narrative of this broken world, when they ask you, what are you? Open up your mouth and say, I am anointed. I'm anointed. It is that anointing that changes everything. David was able to prove hell wrong. Interesting enough, when he received that first anointing, he received it in private. It wasn't public. He, he received his first anointing, and then he subsequently served King Saul. The next thing he did was serve the king. And, and he even started playing the harp for the king who was, who was tormented because of his disobedience and his rebellious spirit. David received his first anointing in the presence of his family members. And he received his first anointing and he waited until God said, now is the time. So what does that teach us? God anoints the private you before he anoints the public you. He anoints you to serve before he anoints you to lead. He anoints you in the presence of those closest to you before he anoints you in the presence of your enemies. He anoints you to wait before he anoints you to win. Repeat after me, I am anointed to prove hell wrong with fresh oil. Fresh oil. You're anointed to prove hell wrong by removing Saul's armor. And Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, took a step or two, and then he said, I can't do this. I can't go in this. So he removed and took Saul's armor. You are anointed to prove hell wrong. You can only prove hell wrong when you understand that you can't fight your giant with someone else's anointing. 
There's too many Christians, too many people in the church that find themselves unable to overcome giants in front of them because they are wearing someone else's armor. You can't get your breakthrough with someone else's praise. You can't fulfill your purpose with someone else's promise. You can't live out your destiny with someone else's identity. You have to wear your own armor. Look at your neighbor, tell him, get your own. You have to carry your own testimony. Revelation 12, 11. But it goes deeper than that. He removed Saul's armor. I'm not doing this. And to be very forthright with you, we know according to 1 Samuel chapter 15 that Saul was a narcissist, a self-inflated, self-seeking individual. And Saul attempted to place on David his armor. And if we follow the logical, the logical continuum of his behavior, we can embrace easily the possibility that the reason why Saul wanted David to wear his armor had nothing to do with David obtaining the victory over the giant. It had everything to do that just in case you do win, people are going to say you won because you were wearing my armor. You're not going to get that till tomorrow morning. In other words, he wanted to get the glory. But praise God, when you remove Saul's armor, the only one that will get the glory for your breakthrough and your victory is the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the host of hosts and the Prince of peace who ordained you for that victory. Removing Saul's armor comes a time where you realize that you, you take off what others have placed on you that hold you back from fulfilling your God-ordained purpose. I love this. He removed his armor. He removed Saul's armor. We, this requires David speaking up to King Saul was actually his first victory. His first major victory was not against Goliath. It was saying no to King Saul. And you got to say no to King Saul before you defeat your Goliath. You have to be able to speak up in the moments that really matter. Well, I, I went through something in California recently where I had to speak up. Let me explain. We, we, we received a call right about November last year. My wife and I received a call from a major ministry in California, a major, major ministry. Uh, they did not survive COVID. Uh, they, were, they lost a lot of people. Um, and they had a, a, a significant debt, 25 million U.S. dollars debt. Um, and they gave me a call and said, Pastor Sam, we have an auditorium that fits 3,100. We have a subsequent auditorium that fits 1,000 and a third auditorium that fits 300. It's, a, it's an 80-acre property in highway frontage. Would you be interested in merging with our church and taking over? And we're in desperate need for a property. So we thought it was an answered prayer. So we, we had preliminary meetings and we met and we discussed everything. And we, you know, we really believed that this was it. So we got together and we, we proceeded after all the preliminaries to the first formal meeting. The first formal meeting. Right before that meeting, my team and I debriefed in, in a certain coffee establishment and I drank my almond milk latte. And, and we talked about what are the hypothetical questions that will be submitted and so forth. So we arrived, my board, their board, the first formal meeting, after this, you sign an MOU, and then you execute accordingly. So there it is. And I'm seated there, and we're, first question, and I'm thinking there, there will be questions about fiduciary governance and integration of systems, possibly attrition regarding current employees on their behalf, even asking what kind of services, languages, Slavic, Spanish, what kind of services will you have, et cetera, et cetera. So I, and I understood all of that. So I'm, I'm ready to go, and I'm ready for the first question, and, and then the, the, board's, the board member looked at me and said, Pastor Samuel, here it is. We have a question for you. First question. And I'm going, okay, what's your question? I'm ready to go. And the man looked at me and said, Pastor Samuel, here's our question. He said, our church, politically, culturally, ideologically, our church, we lean left. Where do you lean? And I'm thinking they're going to ask questions on why do I preach so fast? <laughs> do, I, do I drink that much coffee? Can I, can I calm down for a minute? No. And I, this is my face. So help me. This was a bit vetted with people that we are bored. I'm not, make, I'm not in, just, just like this. Looks at me and says, our church leans left. Where do you lean? This is my face.
first of all, I'm a comedian. The first thing that went through my mind wasn't even spiritual or prophetic. It was, I have enough jokes for the next three years that'll carry me on. <laughs> Pastor Sam, our church leans left. Where do you lean? And this is me. And then a sign and a wonder took place. Nothing came out of my mouth. <laughs> Nothing. That's a sign and a wonder. Nothing. And even my Jeff Carter was here to go like, Pastor Sam, say something. Say something. Nothing would come out. Just, Pastor Sam, we lean left. Where do you lean? And I'm, this is me. This is just... And then the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit tells me, Samuel, say it. But I didn't want to say it because I knew if I would say what he's telling me to say, we weren't going to get the building. So I'm trying to go, mm, and then the Holy Spirit said, say it. And I didn't want to say it, so I held back, and, and then the Holy Spirit always wins. And he said, say it, Sammy. So I looked up. After not saying anything for a minute, I looked up and I went, sir, thank you for your question. With great due deference at our church, new season, we don't lean. We don't lean. We stand. We stand. We stand on the promises of God. We stand on the word of God. We stand on the finished work of God. We, whatever the Bible calls holy, we call holy. Whatever the Bible calls sin, we call sin. Hey, hey, kingdom city around the world. We don't need Christians that lean left or right. We need Christians that stand. Are there any standing believers in kingdom city here? All around the world, Kingdom City doesn't lean. You stand. Somebody shout like you're standing. Somebody praise like you're standing. Lift up your hands right there where you're at. Stand up for biblical truth. Stand up for righteousness and justice. Stand up for the love that expels all fear. Stand up for mercies that are new every morning. Stand up for a grace that is sufficient. Stand, 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 stand. Ephesians 6, put on the armor of God. And when you've done everything else, stand. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, stand firm. Stand. Right there where you're at with your hands raised. David spoke up and said, I am not going to wear this. This is not me. This is not me. He spoke up. And then he spoke up again. You're, you're anointed to prove hell wrong when you're able to speak. When you're able to say no to Saul. Saul looks at him and says, you have nothing. You have no testimony. You have no experience. And then David says, what does he say? Ah, ah, nah. I fought the bear. And I fought the lion. You know what he's saying? You don't know me. You think you know me, but you don't know me. You know me from what you read on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and YouTube. But you don't know the battles I've had. You don't know the private battles I had. You don't know me. You don't know the bears and the lions I defeated in the middle of the night. You don't know the devils I had to rebuke with everything else. You have no idea what I had to overcome. You have no idea what I had to rebuke. You don't know me. If I defeated the bear and the lion, I will bring down that giant in the name of the Lord of Heaven's armies. Stand with me. You are standing. You're anointed to prove hell wrong by living life with more than one stone. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and he put them into a shepherd's bag. Well, five. Why five? And I know we go into theories here. They are adorable. Yeah, have you heard all the different preachers? It's a, it's a foreshadowing of the five-fold ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. That's adorable. 
Oh, bless your heart. <laughs> Why did he pick a five? It's not complicated because he did. That's it. Isn't that great? No, I don't know if you got that. He picked a five because he did. No, you're still not getting it. I'm not a one stone Christian. I don't have just I don't have one stone for one giant. I have a stone for every giant that comes against me and my family. I have a stone to bring down the giant against me, against my children, against my children's children, and my children's children's children. I'm not a one stone Christian. I have enough in my shepherd's bag to knock down every giant that comes my way. Somebody shout like you're what? God has given you power over all the powers of the enemy, Luke 10, 19. Lift up your hands. You have a stone for the giant in your health and your finances. You have a stone for the giant in your past, the giant in your present, the giant in your future. I have a stone for every giant that would dare rise up against my children and my children's children. And I'm not afraid to run out of stones because I know it's where to find a brook. And as long as you know where his presence is, as long as you know that in the presence of God there is fullness of joy, there is victory, there is mercy, you will never run out of stones. You have the stone of the name of Jesus. You have the stone of the word of God. You have the stone of the blood of the Lamb. You have the stone of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And you have the stone of faith that overcomes the world. You're never going to make it. You're never, ever going to defeat the giant. You're never going to occupy Jerusalem. And he did. Because he was anointed to prove hell wrong. Let me pray over you. Heavenly Father, kingdom city is anointed to prove hell wrong. Kingdom city is anointed with fresh oil to prove hell wrong. So, Father, we come into agreement and we declare in the name of Jesus, by the authority of heaven, that this blessed community around the world will make that bold declaration, not in some sort of self-inducing, inflating way, but knowing that it's for your honor and glory. Watch me. Watch me occupy all of God's promises. Conquer new territories. Watch me lead my family from glory to glory. Watch me shine for Jesus. Shine in the name of Jesus. Every single person in Kingdom City around the world is anointed to prove hell wrong. In Jesus' name. If you receive this word, if you truly believe that you receive that anointing today to prove hell wrong, anointed with fresh oil, anointed to remove Saul's armor, anointed not to lean but to stand in all of God's promises, anointed, anointed to have more than one stone in your shepherd's bag, anointed to prove hell wrong. Can you give him the best praise you've given him in the past three days? Somebody prays like it's done. Somebody worship like it's done. You're anointed to prove how wrong. real quick if you're in here if you are everyone streaming all around the world at each respective campus around the world today is the day to receive that fresh anointing that fresh oil 
just like David was anointed on multiple occasions, right before his greatest victories, you are coming under a new anointing in order to occupy what you've never occupied before. And if you have been experiencing giants who have been taunting you, if you have experienced Jebusites who have been taunting and harassing you, it only means you're about to occupy what you've never occupied before. So if that's you, right there where you're at in, in each respective campus, but even here, especially those that say, Pastor Samuel Rodriguez, I want to enter into the fullness of this word. Real quick, we have three minutes to do this. I want you right there where you're at just to come out of your seat and join me somewhere up here. And you're saying, yeah, I want this real quick. We have three minutes and four seconds to make this happen. In each of the campuses all around the world, this is your moment to step into that. Step into the new anointing. Step into that fresh oil. The anointing of assignment. The anointing of acceptance. The anointing of advancement. You don't leave. You stand. Come on, receive your anointing. Yes, receive that fresh oil. Receive. There it is. Go. We are standing on hey. every promise that you made. We will see it come to pass in your name, in your name. to prove hell wrong. I remove right now everything that has been placed on me out of alignment with the Word and the will of God in my life. I pick up enough stones to defeat every giant, every giant that dares rise up against me, my family, my generation, my community, my city, my destiny. And today, in the name of Jesus, I receive that fresh oil, that fresh anointing. I am anointed from the inside out. And I don't lean, I stand. I stand. I stand. In Jesus' name, every giant will be defeated. Every Jerusalem will be conquered. In Jesus' name, now give them your final shout of praise right here, right now. And we are standing on every promise that you made. We will see it come to pass in your day, in your day. Jesus, we will trust every word we hear you say. We will see it come to pass in your day, in your day. We 
Lord today, lift up your hand. If you're anointed to prove how wrong, lift up both hands. I'm going to encourage you to go back home and just in a very nuanced, whimsical way. I know it sounds a little bit old schoolish, but take some extra virgin olive oil. And I know it sounds a little bit archaic to some, but anoint the rooms. And, and, and if you have someone in your home who doesn't serve Jesus, and well, I don't want you to get in trouble and engage in some sort of confrontational dynamic. So there's a, let me show you, there's a way of, just get some oil, put it on you before you even, and then when you greet them, don't even tell them you're anointing them. Just go, hey, great to see you. Oops. Because you and your family are anointed to prove hell wrong. Thank you, Pastor Mark. If you, media team, can you put that graphic on the screen? If you put the media graphic on the book graphic on the screen, media team, if you have it. Pastor Mark, the movie that you featured in the trailer wasn't supposed to come out. During COVID, we, everything was shut down. Um, we received the news that things were not gonna happen. And then all of a sudden, we actually did, we produced this, we, everything was done. We shot this during the, the COVID year, 2020, uh, in, out in New Mexico. And then we, it, they, they told me basically, look, we're sitting on your film. It's never going to be seen by anyone. Our team fasted and prayed because God gave me a word at this life story about a guy who became a born again Christian and invented the number one snack in America. That's how it happened, by the way. He became a born again Christian. He became a born again Christian, goes to an assembly God church, never been a Christian before. He was a, a drug dealer. His wife comes around. She goes to an intercessory prayer group, a small group. They start praying, and she says, we're praying for new, what, what do you want us to pray for? He says, I want to get out of poverty. I need God to give me an idea that will change the world, and that's the guy who invented that snack that invented the nation. But, but coming out of COVID wasn't supposed to be seen. We prayed and fasted, and we proved hell wrong under the anointing, and I got a call one day. said, Sam, Sam, sit down. A, a very famous studio picked up your film and is going to show it for the first time a movie will be on two platforms and I said who is it they said it's Disney and I went Disney doesn't do faith and fa family faith film they do now your film is the only faith film prove hell wrong that's cool if you could put the book graphic real quick that, you heard the message, your mess, God's miracle. I'm going to encourage you. You're getting free copies if you join Greenhouse. Uh, but if you really want to go deep into this, this became a bestseller. It was featured on Fox News. And to God be all the glory, of course. But you could get a study guide. And that devotional is coming out for, for Christmas. You could order that now and pre-order it. Walk out of your mess. The book, the study guide, and the devotional you go on Amazon and purchase that. I promise you, it will change your life. Here's my benediction to you, and I'll give it to Pastor Mark. May the strength of the Father, the grace of the Son, the anointing of the Holy Spirit make this week the best week of 2023 for you and your family. Hey, Kingdom City, let's do one thing together. In Jesus' name, for the glory of Christ, let's go change the world. God bless you and God.